How do you respond to symptoms? Someone asked me the question, should I ignore symptoms? Should I focus on symptoms? Consider that our approach can hinder or support recovery. First thing to consider, how do you view symptoms? Do you view them as bad or do you view them as useful information? For example, imagine you're driving along in your car and one of the lights on the dashboard goes off. That's useful information. It tells you that something needs attending to. We can view symptoms in the same way. So some people ignore their symptoms. They're experiencing symptoms, but they push through, they scroll on social media, and the body can be turning up the signals that, you know, something needs attending to, but we can just ignore that. That can make it more likely that we experience a dip or a crash. Something I used to do, and it's something I learned that I had to shift in order to support my body's healing. Sometimes people spend a lot of time uh, researching symptoms and that just makes them feel more stressed. Some people learn brain training techniques and sometimes people are told to just say stop to the symptoms. And there may be times when that can be done in a useful way, but it can also be done in an unhelpful way. Some people are taught to focus on symptoms. I talk about this equation E plus R equals O, where E is the event, R is the response, O is the outcome. So we can respond to a symptom either in a negative way, for example, distracting ourselves in unhelpful ways, as I've just described. We can chastise ourselves or we can catastrophize, tell ourselves, oh no, I'll never get well. And that obviously is going to cause more stress. We can respond to symptoms in a neutral way. One way we can do that is to use the word sensation rather than symptom. What difference do you notice between the word symptom and sensation? For me, the word sensation is less emotive. We can respond to symptoms or sensations in a positive, resourceful way. Now, sometimes people say to me, how can you do that? Consider that one time I was uh, working with a psychologist and she asked me what's something you'd love to do but feel you can't do and I said I'd like to go clubbing and she said well what if you rested for two days and then went clubbing then rested afterwards and it shifted my mindset from that's something I can't do to actually that is something I could do and so that's what I did I went clubbing afterwards I was experiencing sensations but I had a big smile on my face because I was just thinking about all the fun I'd had. So I used to belong to an ME support group and what would happen is I'd go to one of the meetings, someone would ask me, how are you feeling? I'd start talking about my symptoms. I'd ask them how they were feeling. They'd start talking about their symptoms and then we'd move on and repeat that a number of times, which meant I spent a lot of time talking about, thinking about my symptoms. And actually what I realized is that I was kind of training my brain to think about symptoms and then feel bad. There's research that shows that people who scored for a low number of positive emotions were three times more likely to be sick after exposure to virus than someone who had scored higher for positive emotions. And when the group who scored higher for positive emotions were exposed to virus, their symptoms were much less severe than the other group. Now that's not to say that we should indulge in false toxic positivity, more that we need to do work on shifting our mindset so that we're able to cultivate more positive states in an authentic way. Okay, so I've got an example of that, a friend of mine who kind of learned these techniques of shifting her state. <clears throat> she was going on holiday. Her and her husband arrived at the airport. The taxi driver opened the boot of the car and there was only one suitcase and it wasn't hers. And there'd been a bit of a misunderstanding. She thought her husband was gonna put her suitcase in the cab. She shouted, can you put my suitcase in the cab? He heard the word cab and said, yes, I'll let you know when the cab arrived. So it was a misunderstanding, but she said in the past, 
At that point, I would have been threatening my husband with divorce. On this occasion, she said, well, can't do anything about that. I want to enjoy my holiday. So I'm going to buy some cosmetics when I get to duty free. I'll buy some outfits when I get to the resort. My husband can pay. So she was determined to enjoy her holiday and not let that experience spoil it. How many people would have allowed that to spoil at least the first day of their holiday? Okay, so in terms of talking about symptoms, I think we need to be strategic. You need to choose carefully who you talk to. Obviously, you might need to talk to your doctor. You might need to talk to someone who you trust, who you know is going to be supportive to just help you get things off your chest. OK, so be strategic about who you talk to. When I went to these meetings, I stopped talking about symptoms. I said to people, Look, I don't want to talk about how I'm feeling. I actually want to have a break from that. And I'd end up having nicer time, nice conversations. And I spent a whole period of time where I wasn't thinking about my symptoms and generating feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, etc. So when it comes to more positive ways of working with our symptoms or sensations, consider that some people take a mind body approach. I made a video where I talked about Dr. John Sarno, who worked with people with back pain and other chronic conditions. And I, in that video, I talked about his 12 daily reminders for healing. So check out that video. One of the things he says is that symptoms and pain, if there isn't a structural issue, may be the result of repressed emotions. OK, consider when have you felt better after getting stuff off your chest? I had the experience a number of times where I had some sensational symptom. I went to see the doctor because I was concerned about it. The doctor reassured me and I left the surgery feeling much better, much more relaxed. The sensations or symptoms were much less. OK, also, when have you had periods of feeling good? And you don't know why you were feeling good. What I'd suggest is there have been times where you just feel more relaxed and your symptoms lessen. That is a sign that there is a mind body interaction going on. OK. And Dr. Sarno suggested that we need to shift our attention from physical symptoms to emotional issues. When I work with people, when people do my building resilience course, I teach people how to work with emotions, how to identify emotions, how to process them and how to express them in healthy ways. Repressing our emotions, which we do unconsciously, suppressing our emotions, which is a conscious decision. We notice some emotion, but we decide not to act on it. Let's say someone's said something that I find annoying. I suppress it because I don't want to get into conflict. Um, I'm sure you've had the experience of when you've suppressed emotions and that results in more discomfort. OK. And when people do this work of identifying, processing and expressing emotions in healthy ways, they often report feeling lighter, feeling more relaxed. I remember when I taught this technique to a friend who was experiencing back pain. She realised that she was holding in some emotion and just realizing that she needed to take some action she felt a shift in those sensations in her back so a simple thing you can do is to notice what emotions you feel when you have a sensation or symptom consider what may have happened that may have resulted in that sensation that you're experiencing and what needs to happen to shift that emotion and to shift that sensation. So an example of that is on one occasion I was experiencing flu-like symptoms and I expected them to last days, if not a week or so. I did this process where I kind of tuned in to the physical body. Where am I noticing this sensation in my body? I was noticing a lot of tension in my neck and shoulders. I really just tuned into that, allowed myself to experience that. And then I 
considered what is the emotion that's connected to that physical sensation. What I realized is that I was holding in a lot of frustration. And so I asked that question, well, what's that about? I realized I was feeling frustrated towards myself for having these symptoms. I was being hard on myself. And so I asked myself, what needs to happen to shift this emotion and sensation? I realized I needed to forgive myself. I need to recognize my humanity, that I'm not perfect. I make mistakes and that's okay. And what was really interesting is that within about three hours, those sensations had completely disappeared. And I was amazed because I expected that to last, as I say, for days, if not longer. So identifying our emotions is not necessarily easy if we're very good at repressing or suppressing our emotions. It takes practice. One of the ways that you can get better at that is by just spending a bit of time each day, just tuning in. I find journaling helpful. I've decided recently just to spend one minute each day in the morning just journaling, just tuning in to my body. If we practice that, we get better at it. Okay, so other strategies for working with sy symptoms or sensations in a more useful way is doing techniques that are going to soothe our physiology. Check out the video on vagal toning. I'll put the link below this video. We can take a therapeutic approach, which involves doing inner child work. Instead of saying stop to that symptom, to recognize that there is a part of us that is maybe having a reaction to that symptom. Maybe we're generating some anxiety and it's useful to consider that part and identify what part is this? It might be the child part, it might be another part. But for example, I recognize times when it is that child that's feeling upset, frustrated, feeling anxious. And by listening to that part, allowing it to speak, allowing it to say what it needs to say, that emotion can be released and that has an impact on the symptom. Also doing this work can actually help us build compassion towards ourselves, And again, that's going to result in less stress, more calm. We can distract ourselves in ways that are positive, okay? For instance, connecting to others within your current range. For instance, I often have a Zoom call with friend or friends and we make sure we have some fun. We play uh, a game online called Puzz Grid, check it out. And it's just a way of having a bit of fun, having a bit of connection. I aim to make sure I have some fun and joy in my day. So even if I'm at home today, I've been working from home and I'm not going out this evening because I've got a client call a bit later. So after that client call finishes, I will make sure whilst I'm doing the washing up, I'll watch some comedy on Netflix, okay? Sometimes I play guitar or piano. I'm learning the piano at the moment. That brings me joy. I love doing that. It gives me a sense of satisfaction that I'm making some progress. So what is it for you? It might be you have another form of creativity, it might be art or cookery or knitting, but finding some way of bringing some joy in our life on a daily basis is important, okay? So, I encourage you to find that sweet spot between doing some self-inquiry, learning more about the connection between mind and body, and also doing things that are positive distractions rather than negative distractions. It might be that you do need time to connect, to soothe, to maybe do some meditation or listen to a guided relaxation to just allow yourself to have some time out. Obviously, if you're experiencing symptoms that need medical attention, then make sure you do that. But ultimately training ourselves that even though we're experiencing some sensation, some symptom, that we are safe, you've survived this before, and just accessing that parasympathetic state, the healing state, regulating your nervous system is going to support healing. 
So I'd love to know what's your takeaway from this video. So do leave a comment, I read them all, and you know, your comment might help someone else. Do follow if you'd like more tips. I'm gonna be making a video on journaling. Someone asked me, how do you journal? So I'm gonna make a video on that. So follow me if you'd like to watch that video. I have a Facebook group where I share lots of tips and resources, link below this video. If you'd like to know more about how I work, I offer this course called Building Resilience. I also do one-to-one -one coaching and group coaching. Then there's a link below, send me a message. I'm happy to have a 15 minute chat with you. So keep going, you've got this. Wishing you great health. Thanks for watching, bye for now.